Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Firms seek to maximize profits by producing economic goods and selling them to consumers. In order to do this, firms must transform inputs into output through the production process. The theory of production helps us understand all of the factors that can affect the choices that firms must face when deciding what to make and how to make it. The production process begins with the acquisition of inputs. Inputs are the resources, the land, labor, and capital that are used by firms to produce output. Firms will decide what to produce based on consumer demand. If we want it or need it, firms have a profit motive to supply it because we'll buy it to satisfy our utility. Once they've committed to producing a product, they'll enter the factor market to acquire all the inputs they need to make it. However, firms must pay wages and rent in order to purchase the land, labor, and capital they need to manufacture goods. These wages and rents become costs for firms, which means, ultimately, firms must pay costs in order to produce output. Output are the finished goods and services that firms produce in order to maximize profits. Once output is produced, firms will supply it in the product market in order to sell it to consumers. Through voluntary exchange, output will be sold at a price and quantity in the market. The price collected per unit creates revenue for the firm. Output can be measured several ways. Total physical product, also known simply as total product, is the total quantity of output produced by a firm. Average product is the quantity of total output produced per unit of input used in the production process. Average product can be calculated by dividing total product by the number of inputs used. Marginal product is the quantity of total output produced by each additional unit of input used in the production process. Marginal product can be calculated by dividing the change in total product by the change in inputs used. Let's take a closer look at these output measurements. Provided is the production data for a typical firm in the fast food industry. And because it makes the greatest cheeseburger out there, and it's my favorite, let's say this firm is in and out. We can see the total product or the total number of burgers made by in and out after hiring each additional worker. To calculate the marginal product of each in and out worker, we simply need to analyze the total product for in and out before and after hiring each worker. The difference in total product after hiring each worker gives us the marginal product of each in and out worker. To calculate the average product per worker, we simply need to take the total product for in and out after hiring each worker and divide it by the total number of workers hired. In order to visualize the trends in total physical product, marginal product, and average product with each worker hired, we're going to take the data we've calculated and graph it on a set of axes. Here we can see the total number of burgers produced by in and out with each worker hired, the number of burgers that each additional worker produced for in and out and the number of burgers produced per worker hired. Look carefully at the data and the graph. Total product, marginal product, and average product initially increase and then decrease as in and out hires more workers. Wait, why is that? Shouldn't output continue to increase as in and out hires more workers? I mean, more workers means more output, doesn't it? Well, it does, but only up to a certain point. Total product, marginal product, and average product initially increase and then decrease because in and out like every other firm, experiences diminishing returns during the production process. The law of diminishing marginal return states that as variable resources are added to fixed resources during the production process, the additional output produced from each new input will eventually fall. Essentially, at some point, 
each additional worker used in the production process becomes less productive than the last. You ever heard the expression, too many cooks in the kitchen? That expression is actually referring to diminishing marginal returns. A typical restaurant has a fixed amount of land and capital in the short run. It has a set amount of space in its kitchen, and the quantity of cooktops and ovens in the kitchen is constant. As the restaurant begins to hire chefs, each chef has plenty of space to prepare food and cook, allowing them to specialize in their tasks and utilize the kitchen equipment without disruption. As a result, the marginal product of the first few cooks is increasing, and the total product of the restaurant is increasing at a faster rate. However, as the restaurant continues to hire chefs, there's now more cooks occupying the same fixed space in the kitchen. They're bumping into each other as they cross the kitchen to access supplies, and they're having to wait for other chefs to finish their work in order to use cooktops, ovens, and refrigerators. This slows down production, and the marginal product of each additional chef actually begins to decrease causing the total product of the restaurant to increase, but at a slower rate. Finally, as the restaurant continues to hire chefs, the kitchen is way too crowded. Chefs can't find room to work at their stations, and much less work is getting done. Orders aren't going out. Food is burning. Many chefs can't find equipment to work with because fixed resources like ovens and cooktops are already being used by other chefs. Chefs are literally standing around getting nothing done. As a result, production actually decreases. The marginal product of each additional chef becomes negative, and the total product of the restaurant begins to decrease. See? Too many cooks in the kitchen. There are three stages of returns that a typical firm will experience when producing output. Let's assume, for a typical firm, land and capital are fixed, and the firm is looking to hire workers. In stage one, the firm will experience increasing marginal returns as it hires additional labor. During stage one, each additional worker is more productive than the last. The marginal product and average product of each worker increases because each worker specializes in their task and utilizes fixed resources efficiently while the total product of the firm increases at an increasing rate. In stage two, the firm will experience decreasing marginal returns as it hires additional labor. During stage two, each additional worker is less productive than the last. The marginal product and average product of each worker decreases because each worker finds it more difficult to specialize in their task because there aren't enough fixed resources for the size of the workforce while the total product for the firm increases at a slower rate. In stage three, the firm will experience negative marginal returns as it hires additional labor. During stage three, each additional worker gets in the way of production. The marginal product goes negative, while average product continues to decrease because workers get in each other's way. The workforce is much too large for the number of fixed resources available and specialization is impossible, leading the total product of the firm to decrease. Let's go back to the production data for in and out You probably now notice the law of diminishing marginal returns in effect for in and out as they hire additional workers. We can use this data to identify the three stages of returns that in and out experiences during the production process. The first, second, and third worker hired by in and out each have a marginal product that is greater than the marginal product of the previous worker. The first worker produces 10 burgers, the second worker produces 15 burgers, and the third worker produces 20 burgers. At the same time, in and outs total product continues to increase at a faster rate when it hires each of the first three workers. From here, we can determine that in and out is experiencing increasing marginal returns when it hires the first, second, and third workers. The fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh worker hired by in and out 
each have a marginal product that is lesser than the marginal product of the previous worker. The fourth worker produces 15 burgers. The fifth worker produces 10 burgers. The sixth worker produces 5 burgers. And the seventh worker produces no burgers at all. At the same time, in and outs total product continues to increase, but at a slower rate when it hires workers 4, 5, and 6, and then stops increasing after hiring worker 7. From here, we can determine that in and out is experiencing decreasing marginal returns when it hires the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th worker. Finally, the 8th worker hired by in and out has a marginal product that is negative. He has a marginal product of negative 5, and in and outs total product begins to decrease when it hires worker 8. in and out is literally losing burgers because this guy is getting in the way in the kitchen. As a result, in and out is experiencing negative marginal returns when it hires the 8th worker. Take a closer look at the correlations between the total product and marginal product curves. When the marginal product curve is rising, the total product curve is rising at an increasing rate. When the marginal product curve reaches its apex, the total product curve stops rising at an increasing rate. When the marginal product curve begins to fall, the total product curve begins to rise at a slower rate. When the marginal product curve hits zero, the total product curve reaches its apex and total product is maximized. And when the marginal product curve becomes negative, the total product curve begins to fall. And that's marginal product and diminishing returns. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy my channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my production cost video, or you can click here for my micro minute video on the law of diminishing marginal returns. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.